animal reproduction, mating and fertilization. Welcome to the science class for sixth grade. Why is animal reproduction important? All living creatures reproduce. It is what makes living different from non-living. When an organism reproduces, it ensures that the species will continue on. Without the continuation of the species, they would become extinct. Why are animals endangered? There are several reasons why animals are endangered. One of them is hunting. People hunt animals for pleasure or to satisfy their needs. Another reason is fires in the woods. One third reason would be the weather changes. To prevent animals from extinction, reproduction needs to progress at a faster rate than destruction. A species which cannot reproduce enough offspring will disappear forever from the face of the earth. It will become extinct. This has happened many times in the past due to different causes. Some of these causes are asteroid strikes, loss of habitat, climate change, better adapted competition, invasive species, lack of food, lack of genetic diversity, disease, and human predation. On this slide, we can see some examples of extinct animals. They existed, but they are not on the earth anymore. The mammoth, the dodo bird, the aquagua, dinosaurs, Extinct animals of North America, the Western camel, the Asian bison, the American lion, the mastodon, the short-faced bear, the Columbia mammoth, the dire wolf, the saber-toothed cat, the Hagerman horse, and the Jefferson's ground sloth. Mating. Most animals reproduce sexually. Animal and human sexual reproduction possess many similarities. If human reproduction has been clear for you, Animal reproduction will be very easy for you to understand. To produce an offspring, the sperm and egg have to meet. In order for a sperm and an egg to meet, the male and the female must mate. Fertilization in humans. Fertilization, as you already know, is the moment in which a male sex cell, a sperm, unites with a female sex cell, the ovule. As a result of their union, a zygote is formed in the womb of the female. The division and growth of the zygote leads to the birth of a new individual.
Internal Fertilization Vertebrate animals such as reptiles, birds, mammals, and most insects do not return to water to mate. So the male must place the sperm cells directly inside the female's body. Just like humans, the males and females have special parts that promote reproduction. The male has an organ which he can insert into an opening in the female which receives the sperm. The result is that land animals have developed complicated mating behavior which involves dances, smells, and often very colorful mating exhibitions. It is usually the male which is colorful in the animal world in order to attract a mate. Peacocks are a stunning example of the different difference between male and female. The male has bright, showy tail feathers. The female has short tail feathers and lacks the beautiful colors of the male. The other type of fertilization is external. It is also called spawning. Some aquatic animals like frogs, toads, and most fish release their eggs and sperm into the water where they meet and are fertilized. This process is called spawning. Evidences for the second session of next week's class. Solve the multiple choice exercise on pages 29 and 30 in the science textbook. Solve the matching on page 30 in the science textbook. Complete the exercises on page 32 about extinct and endangered animals. Watch the following video and be prepared for discussion in class. It is a bizarre practice, but the female praying mantis sometimes eats her mate. The unusual meal provides nutrients for her eggs. A school of clownfish consists of a male and female breeding pair, along with a larger group of non-breeding males. If the female dies, the breeding male will switch its gender. For most organisms, mating is the reproductive act that enables individuals to pass on their genes. Let's learn more about reproductive strategy. Reproductive strategy refers to the ways in which a species ensures its offspring reach adulthood. The reproductive strategy evolves to maximize the number of offspring that reach maturity and reproduce. The animal world engages in various reproductive strategies. For example, zebras have a gestation period of about a year and produce a single foal that can live up to 40 years, while female sea turtles emerge from the ocean and lay 50 to 200 eggs. They cover the hole and retreat to the ocean hoping that at least one of their eggs survives to adulthood. There are two basic strategies. Parents can invest in a few offspring with long development to maturity, as in the zebra. Alternatively, parents can opt to produce many offspring with shorter time to maturity as in the sea turtle. Each strategy, and how it has evolved in each species, is the result of a trade-off between number of offspring and development time. Scientists recognize the two reproductive strategies as R-selection and K-selection. Each species lies somewhere on the RK continuum, determined by evolution, which maximizes the reproductive success of a species' individuals. What kinds of environmental conditions make one strategy more successful than another? Stable, resource-rich environments with the young exposed to predators produce case strategies of reproduction. Case strategies invest in development of offspring. Animals such as humans, elephants, dolphins, and plants like sequoia trees use a K reproductive strategy. A species' reproductive strategy affects its reproductive behavior and physical characteristics. For example, K-strategists often choose mates through competitive mating rituals. They form pair bonds and create small families with few offspring. Pair bonding in small families enable the parents to care for offspring during a long developmental period, 
resulting in low juvenile mortality. Among case strategists, body size is typically large and reproductive maturity takes many years. The population of case species is stable. Humans are a prime example of a case species. We live in a stable environment, invest in long-term development, and care for just a few offspring. On the other end of the continuum, unstable environments with few resources and less predatory threat favor our selection reproductive strategies. Small rodents, most insects, bacteria, and weeds are examples of our species. Species within these groups have a lot of offspring and reach maturity quickly, often living short lives. Few our selected species engage in any sort of mate competition or mating rituals. Juvenile mortality is very high. The few individuals that reproduce do so only once or a few times, but they produce a large number of offspring. Among our selected species, parental care of offspring is usually absent. Offspring are capable of survival at birth and reach reproductive maturity quickly. The population size of our selected species often fluctuates widely. Evolution always acts to maximize the reproductive success of individuals. A particular reproductive strategy characterizes a species only because evolution has acted through natural selection to ensure each individual has the best chance possible of having offspring that will, in their turn, continue the next generation.